This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. Ah, drones, you know, people, people, people crack me up. I, I think that, that uh, there's, there's a contingent of folks out there and I love you, I, I truly do. I, 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 I bear no ill will towards you, but you're, you're so excited about drones and the technology and how cool they are and you know being a pilot and getting a, a part 107 and all this kind of stuff um, and trying really, 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 really hard to kind of wish it into um, existence that the insurance industry is going to be all about you and your drone and your part 107, right? And the fact of the matter is, is that unfortunately, they're not, okay? However, that said, that doesn't mean that there aren't absolutely benefits to, to having a drone in the back of your truck um, and to using a drone in certain very, very, very specific situations where I think even if the insurance industry was all about it, I would still only use a drone in these specific situations. So I'm gonna talk about those right now. Um, I, I think that the, the number one thing that, uh, the number one benefit that you're gonna get from being a drone pilot and having a drone accessible to you or available to you in your backseat um, or having somebody that you know who has a drone that has a camera, they all have cameras on them these days. The, the biggest thing it's gonna do for you is it's gonna allow you to um, inspect and assess um, structures that are inaccessible, right, by other means, right? So you can't just like shoot a rope over the top of it and, and put your fall protection on and just get up there and look at it, um, right? So inaccessible. Um, so they may be taller than anything that you've got to climb onto it, and there's no dormers or windows you can climb out or no roof hatch, no, and nothing like that. And it's more than like the tallest ladder or bucket truck or whatever, which you're gonna occasionally encounter, right? Right, so that's inaccessible. Um, number two, if it's dangerous, you'd be in absolutely out of your mind to walk on it, which means something like, you know, uh, four foot diameter, you know, 300 year old tree fell over and did, landed right on top of the house, even if it's a one story and smashed all the framing, right? And and, and damaged and, and ruined the structural integrity of the rest of the framing on the roof and the, the walls and everything else. And you have a high chance, even with the, the tree off of it, um, and you know, maybe a contractor shoring things up a little bit on, underneath, there's a very high ch risk that you could fall through, get injured or killed, you know, and not in a very pleasant way um, on that roof, right? So, or one that w was damaged by fire um, to the point to where the framing has been weakened enough to where you could fall through, right? So inaccessible, um, dangerous, like don't, it, you wouldn't, you shouldn't climb on it anyway, right? Um, and then I would say, um, I think that's pretty much it. I think for, for me, for every other kind of roof, uh, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get on it and um, inspect it as much as I can. I'm gonna bring along all the gear that I'm gonna need to do it myself so I don't have to rely on somebody else, whether it's ladder assist or a two-story steep team provided by the carrier or a ladder assist you know, through Hancock or through the company I'm working for. Um, I'm gonna bring all that stuff along with me so that I can just pull up to the house and be like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'll have to pull my 32 footer out on that one. Or I'm gonna have to pull the rope and harness out on that one, right? And just do it, right? And not sit around and wait to reschedule. Um, I think that kills kills productivity if you have to reschedule or wait for other people. You have to try to coordinate your schedule with somebody else's. That, that file is sitting on your desk for a while, right? And I don't want that to happen. I want that file in my checking account. I don't want it sitting on my desk, wasting time and wrecking my cycle time, right? Now, as, as far as the drone goes, and those those first two examples, uh, the other thing to take into consideration is is that if the roof was damaged so badly by a big tree, right, or by fire, you're probably just going to write to replace it anyway. You're not from the ground. You're going to be like, well, the whole inside of this thing is charred to a crisp. Write and a check for the whole thing. You can't do the, the other repairs without taking the roof off and replacing it and the framing and everything. You don't need necessarily to climb up on it um, unless you want to try to do uh, get measurements or something like that or get the shape of it. 
And in that case, you know, there's going to be satellite imagery, most likely, or an eagle view or something that you can use or use hover, right? Um, although if it's burnt, if it's burnt up, if it's gone, you're not just pointless to use a drone, right? And the other thing is, is that if it's inaccessible and there is a, there isn't any otherwise like major like obvious damage to it, like a uh, tree or shingles blown off or you know some damage from flying debris or something like that, um, if it's hail. You're going to have to put eyes on it, and you're going to have to touch that roof, right? Um, the technology, and I know people, this this video may not age well, right? There, it may be, it's not there, right? In 2023, it's not there yet. 2024 it might be, right? 2027, better chance that it's going to be there. But at the moment, um, I, and I, I asked uh, a couple of different forensic engineering firms about specifically about drones, and they both said. Um, and this was in the last few months, they both said, um, we do a lot of litigation uh, that for claims that were denied uh, by drones, by just a drone inspection only, right? Where they said, nope, there's no hail damage, the algorithm didn't recognize it or whatever. Um, and then they go back out there and discover that, you know, had the adjuster just gotten up on the roof, even at the top of the ladder and just like, you know, did a survey right there and found, you know, put their fingers on it and looked at it close up. Um, they found that it actually did have hail damage on it and they're paying for the roof anyway, right? So um, that they call that ground truthing, right? Um, and this is something that, this is the reason why the insurance companies don't want you using drones on claims. I don't, I don't care what anybody says about it. Uh, contractors can use them all they want to. Um, you know, if you're a drone operator and you disagree with this, that's totally fine. But the fact is, is that the, the carriers um, aren't interested in, in having to go to court for every single denied hail claim because the technology is not quite there to recognize whether there's damage or not on, especially composition shingles, right? It is what it is. If you really, really, really want to use a drone, and it's one of those two situations where it's, where it's either very inaccessible, uh, where it's, it's absolutely unreasonable, or you're pretty much guaranteed to break your neck if you try to climb on it, or it's dangerous where it's structurally unsound, um, perhaps, right? Then um, if you're going to use a drone, then don't be taking like big far back pictures and like straight down photos or whatever, unless you just need that for your own use. Um, try to get the drone up as close to the shingles as you can um, to get a good, accurate photos. You know, obviously you, you want to put your own eyes on something, but it may be that the very, very second best thing is going to be the drone, you know, within two, two to four feet or whatever of the shingle to, to get a really close look at it to say, yep, that's a braided crease or yep, this, that's a hole from the tree limb or yep, that's this, yep, that's that, right? And then you can take your photos from that. And you're not trying to trick anybody, but it doesn't look like you took uh, a photo with a drone and you got good photos to make a solid assessment on it, right? Um, I'm going to talk about the cons of, more of the cons about drones and why I, I even if they were allowed, I still wouldn't use one um, in a later video. But suffice it to say, I think that it's not something that's bad to have in your arsenal. Um, you're gonna have to spend money on the drone. You wanna get the training for it, and then you wanna get your part 107, and that can that can, that can exceed $2,000 in expense for something that's probably gonna sit in its case in your back seat for a while, right? And be pulled out every once in a while. I have a rope and harness. Uh, equipment, right? The whole, the, the harness and the ropes and the, the senders and the whole nine yards, right? And I think, and I, I ran with that around in the back of my truck um, for a good seven or eight years. And I think I pulled it out three times. And I was doing, you know, I was closing between 700 and 1200 cl claims, most of those hail claims every single year. And that's how often I took out my rope and harness. I mean, it could be argued. <laughs> I should have taken it out more often than that. But the vast majority of roofs, it was just like their easy step right up onto them, you know, four twelves, which is the mo most houses, at least in the, mid the Midwest and the upper Midwest. Um, and, and in fact, a lot of the South as well. Most houses are that way, right? Um, so the thing that, that served me better was just having a taller ladder, right? So I always carried a 24 foot ladder, extension ladder, and a 32 foot extension ladder, both aluminum. And again, the 32 footer would probably stay on my, it could stay on my truck and not be taken off the, off my, my luggage rack an entire summer. And then the next summer, I'm pulling it off every other claim. So 
that was probably the most useful um, sort of thing for accessing roofs that I could think of. Um, but drones are it's not necessarily a bad thing. There's a rare, occur a rare chance that you're gonna have situations where you can't access the roof for whatever reason, right? Uh, maybe there's a, a, a moat around the building with full of alligators or pit bulls, right? And then you gotta like, you, you don't want, you can't even go through the yard, right? It, the drone may work in that circumstance. Um, so drones, um, Pros, some pros, certainly some pros, um, but again, it's it's a it's a, like a marginal sort of a piece of equipment, I would say. Um, it's not gonna be the thing that's really gonna contribute to the vast majority of the benefit that you would get from a tool and that it's ex as expensive as that. Um, but again, I'll talk more about the cons, and there's more of them in a later video, but but for now, that's that's kind of where, you know, the, pro, the two pros that I could think of for drones. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at AdjusterTVPlus.com.